Good day. Today, my topic for discussion is the inevitable fall of the inconsistent tax standard. Firstly, I should start out by saying that I am a third year studying finance at the University of Pretoria, and I intend to pursue taxation as my honors. Now, when one discusses tax, immediately there is this blockage of, oh, I won't understand, and and that's severely dangerous and to the potential deficit of our resources and as a society as a whole. But it's not my goal to teach you how to do your own taxes. My goal is to share with you how inequality and negligence will just lead to a greater discrepancy. But before I do, I need you to understand that not all tax systems are the same as ours. Switzerland, for example, is divided into cantons, which are basically provinces each that have their own tax system. And the Bahamas does not have a capital gains tax or an income tax. For those that don't know, capital gains is basically selling equipment for a profit. I'm only mentioning these two countries specifically because we all know that they're good for tax. But a lesser known issue is that in South Africa, that a lot of companies will classify or will declare that their head of operations or their their main taking of operations are in Mauritius. This is because their company tax is 13% below ours. There are other benefits, such as they have tax credits on global income at an effective rate of about 3%, and they do not have a capital gains tax, nor do they have a tax on withholding of dividends. This is how countries incentivize increasing investment in their own country. They lower the tax, to try and gain more investors. But the principle stands. You tax what you don't want. You will tax what you want to discourage, and you don't tax what you want to encourage. For example, cigarettes tax is about 50%, depending on the amount of tobacco included, and alcohol tax is about 35% on a spirit level of alcohol. This is due to our finance minister, as well as sin tax. For those of you that don't know, sin tax is a tax on something that is going to potentially decrease our health. But taxes can be introduced and they can be revisited, such as e-cigarettes and vapes are to be new additions to the sin tax list in 2021, as well as taxes are introduced. For example, in 2011 for Denmark, they introduced the fat tax. And in 2016, for South Africa, they introduced a sugar tax. The goal of these systems is clear. The more fat and sugar and alcohol you consume and the more frequent you smoke, the more likely you are to use the country's medical resources. And we deem that as fair. Such as with the sugar tax. All of a sudden, products have decreased in size this is stems from the belief that customers would rather pay the same amount for less of the product than would pay more for the same. This is also now why we get original taste and healthier and new and improved recipe because sugar substitutes are not taxed as heavily. But again, this all just seems just. We increase the sugar tax because we note that sugar is a problem within our country and is using a lot of resources. But in many ways, it should also be fair that there's no tax on starving, which also uses quite a lot of resources, and that it should be stated that milk is still about four rand more expensive than any sort of soft drink that you would purchase at a two liter. But now getting to the main point of my discussion, tax brackets are seemingly reasonable. We believe that if you earn 17,000 rand a month, you'll be paying roughly 18% towards income tax. But now, say you earn 18,000 rand a month, you'll all of a sudden pay 18.4% a month. This is because you're increasing the income as well as a tax bracket has changed here. We believe that 
everyone should pay 18%, and when you earn more than 17,159 rand a month, you should be subject to 26%. And this idea continues so on and so forth up until you are paying roughly 45%. But by then, you're earning more than 131,000 rand a month, so you can afford it. Just for a point of interest, the average cabinet minister is within that bracket. We all want to pay less. We all want to move down a bracket or just, in general, just less income tax. So we feel dissatisfied and we try to speak out, such as the plan mass movements, and we're squished. Some by fear, but mainly by the constitution and because your employer already pays your employees tax. To deviate slightly, a brief history lesson, I promise. The Roman Empire fell number one because of the Germanic barbarian tribes that invaded in the early 400s, and number two, an over-reliance on slave labor, political corruption, political instability, and an ineffective tax system. In Rome's origins, they paid about 1% towards tax. It was deemed on their wealth, and it was 3% during a war effort. But as Rome grew, as did this idea of tax farming, where it only led to corruption by the publicane, which were their tax collectors at the time. Often, an individual will inflate the cost of a project and then will pocket the excess. We see it happen everywhere. But exploitation of tax has existed from the Magna Carta all the way up into the revolutionized slave trade in America today to use Stephen Fry's term. For those of you that don't know, America imprisons more of their civilians than any other nation in history, according to the Washington Post and various other documented resources. But this concept of America employing cheap labor through their prisons is not a new concept, as well as it should be stated that they do not allow importation of any product that has been made under forced labor. And the issue with this that I'm going to deal with is not the humanitarian side. It's the tax side. How is it that countries with high poverty rates and, and low educated populations allow something like a lottery to ever take place? Where for the majority it's creating a false hope. And even if you win a percentage is taken, you're taxed on winning. Now to return to the main point of my discussion. It takes money to hide money. The more wealth you have, the more you can hide. Our wealthiest individuals can, can afford the corruption to be blatant, and they, they can afford the tax professionals that can reclassify items for them just to steer it away from their tax balance. They can afford to start up businesses to be subject to the flat 28% tax in South Africa. See, the issue isn't tax avoidance. It's this consistent gray area where tax avoidance is not not paying. It's the exploitation of a tax regime. Tax in and amongst itself, there is no real issues regarding it. We may not like to pay taxes. We feel that it might be misapportioned. But the concept is there. This idea of tax avoidance that was discussed by David Mitchell is that all of a sudden wealthier individuals have a moral compass when it comes to paying their tax. But the principle stands. You tax what you don't want. These individuals are somewhat declaring how much they think they should pay towards tax. It cannot be measured accurately. They can buy businesses to be subject to the 28% flat tax rather than the progressive tax system that we all have to endure. We are, by default, taxing good morals. By doing this, we are encouraging tax avoidance, tax evasion, fraud, and general poor morals amongst communities. Pay less if you care less. 
That's the imposed incentive. Thank you. Thank you.